Welcome to the Mischief. I'm Valen, and this is FTB Stoneblock 3. Today, I'm going to be starting along the path to automating, well, harvesting the silverfish? The reason I say that is because there's a lot uh, still to do with the next automation steps, but uh, I'm going to take it one bit at a time. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, so I did look into things. People are in the comments were saying, oh my gosh, wait until he sees the Drigme charm. I already was aware of the Drigme charm's cost. Yep, which is four hearts, which means I'm going to have to kill a bunch of these mother silverfish. Uh, but I went around and I harvested a bunch of shards, uh, the cold silverfish ones and the warm silverfish ones. What I did is I just put this, this thing on I talked about earlier, the spectator. And then I just, uh, depending upon the area I was in, let's go to the map here. And I can zoom in like the warm netherfish, uh, the, the warm silverfish shards uh, were found throughout here. I more or less just went through the entire area while holding uh, the warm shards in my offhand. Uh, and then I just ran through and harvested things with my super speedy Paxel. Even if it was just like chopping through walls and stuff, it was really, really quick and easy for that. Um, and then I would just occasionally eat, etc. And I did the same thing uh, if I go to the map again and zoom in back here. Uh, I, I went up over to this area, found a few more. I cleaned out the rest of this area and more or less just finished off stuff. I found another zone over there, but I, I don't think I really need to get into that area. And I just harvested things as I ran through holding the item I needed so I could find it uh, in that spot. But I'm going to take this off and put back on my flugal tiara because I like the pretty wings, and more importantly, I like to be able to fly, even if it is briefly. So, um, next steps. <laughs> I'm gonna need those hearts. I'm, so I'm sorry, friendo, but uh, yeah, this is just a thing that's gonna need to happen. So, I don't know what the easiest way is. Let's see how much, can I even hit you? Yeah, actually, I think the sword is probably not, not bad, 856. Let's see if I zap you. 849. Yeah, I think the sword's probably going to be a little bit better. I might be able to use the uh, the Paxel. Oh, to even greater effect. Okay, yeah. We'll do this. Finish this one off. Try summoning in a new one and see if it'll destroy this entire area that I just set up. There we go. First one's dead. Um, where, where's where's my heart charm? Guess what? It's underneath because I installed that uh, little absorption hopper down here. Yep, there it is. I even got some warm silver fish shards in uh, response to that. That's actually pretty good. So the next step is to add things back into there. I can't really reach it very easily underneath, so I just added this little uh, trap door for now <laughs> in hopes that this will work out okay. Did that just take all my, my shards? Wait a minute, come back here. Can I can I please get those back? Yeah, I got the rest of them here. Turns out they're in the crystal chest. Uh, by removing them, they don't go into my inventory. They just get tossed into the world, strangely. Uh, so let me change this up a bit. I just want 16 of these to go in there. There we go, and then I can just leave those ones. And then I want to do the same with the cold, so that I'm not wasting too many of these shards. I have no idea if it would just use those shards anyway. Putting in a dozen eggs, then I just need one of the ritual starters. And then I, I need to, to hope and pray nothing gets broken. So let's back up and see how things go from there. It seems to have worked. The skeletons are running around right now and <laughs> failing at doing very much. But the uh, the silverfish mother itself seems to be quite stasis, and I'm all right with that. So let me just clean up the this riffraff, and uh, I'll come right back to you guys. If anything, these interdiction torches made it very easy to clean those guys up. Uh, and with this just kind of sitting here... It's encouraging that uh, I don't need to worry about it too much. People give me a lot of different tips on how to actually progress with this. I appreciate all the help. Uh, thank you very much. So, 
With that out of the way, this means that it is going to work for me, and I just need to do this a few more times. So let's get going with getting the next sets ready. And there we have it. I think that should complete everything. Uh, it's already in my inventory. I have four silverfish hearts. Excellent. Let's get rid of the rest of this junk here. Don't really need that. And just in case, I'll put the eggs and the other shards and another ritual starter in here for the next setup when I'm ready to spawn another one. No need to actually spawn them because something I did notice is that um, <laughs> if I spawn a new one uh, and it starts pooping out the babies, well, the babies then sit on top of the altar and don't get eaten. Uh, by the mob mashers, which is kind of a problem, <laughs> but that's not a problem for now. That's a problem for future me. I'm going to need to make the rest of the Drigme Charm ingredients. I have source gems. I have different kinds of seeds that I could probably put in place on an enchanting apparatus, which I think I already have over there. And I just need some Drigme shards, which are obtained by giving a Drigme a wilden horn. Now, as tempting as it is to give it a French horn, I need to give it a Wilden horn. So I do have one of those at least. But let's go back here and head into the back. Oh, it looks... Oh, that's right. Okay, so remember a while ago I had some problems with some mobs uh, not spawning in my base. Uh, specifically up in the mob farm. That's a good reason for that. Uh, it's because I had underneath this area placed because this is a slime chunk as you notice here uh i had placed a uh, uh one of those mega torches yep i totally forgot that i had done so to stop these slimes from spawning but now yeah they they'll, they're going to be spawning around in here so maybe i do put the mega torch back <laughs> but i also have this my pink slime generator is currently doing some work here. I, I had to put a torch in there because the mobs were not spawning because it just became too dark. So now if I put that in there and I turn this off, uh, actually these slimes are starting to bug me now. Let me get rid of these ones. We start spawning in some mobs. As you can see, we've got a, a, a whirly sprig, whatever it's called, and there's a carbuncle and I just need the right one. So let me get a mob capturing device. There we go. I've got a, a few mob imprisonment tools here. I think it would be best if I got a couple just in case. I'm going to regret doing this, but I'm going to need to open this up in order to get to some of these Drigmies. Hi. Get in there. And I'm going to leave it closed for the rest of these ones at the moment. Let's, no, you're not getting out. I'm going to put down one of these Drigmies here and click on it with a wild and horn. See what happens. It's going to explode like the chicken. Can I, can I give this to you? Take this. It's dangerous to go alone. You don't want this. Why not? Oh, I have to toss it, and then you do a little dance. And then you, you turn into crystals. Okay, well, okay, I guess I'm going to <laughs> refine your crystal shape into something more useful for me. So with this recipe all set to go, and my Drigme... Uh, crystallized shards <laughs> in hand. I'm going to click this in here and we get the sparkles. Oh, it's so nice when this stuff happens. I feel like it just needs some kind of like little musical like uh, effect, I guess. But here we go. I now have a Drigme charm. What do I do with it? I don't really know. So let's look it up in the book. I've got my Drigme charm, but I don't want to use it yet because I would rather summon in the Mother Silverfish and then get the Drigme positioned close to it. I might have to adjust my current uh, <laughs> capturing area uh, just so that it better fits. But for now, let's put this, 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 and this in place. Then I need to get out of the way as usual. And that's kind of what I was afraid of. It, it seems the mother silverfish is laying immediately. The, the previous one wasn't doing it at all. Um, but yeah, we'll just deal with it as we can. So there is something I learned. Uh, the latest update allowed the player damage plates to start hurting some of these silverfish dudes. And I think that might be something that I need to do. As you can see, they're kind of shooting out on the sides. That's not a good sign. Um, hmm. 
It would be nice if I could get this mother silverfish off on the side like the last one was. I think what I'm going to have to do is turn this thing off and back on again. I don't I don't know if that's a good idea or not. And as I expected, bad things happened, but I think it's working to my advantage here. Yeah, my area kind of got wrecked, but in the process of that happening, I think the, the young are now being killed automatically because they're being dropped on the mobs, <laughs> the, the mob masher things. Man, what a mess. So on the plus side, I am hearing the other baby silverfish being killed regularly, so that that's definitely a positive. And I had put these uh, stairs up on the sides, not just for myself, but in case that one of these did escape, I could potentially lure it back into this box area if it was still standing. Um, but what I think I'm going to do is actually take down the stairs on this side and create that henge that the uh, the little drigme is going to need. Yeah, look at that. They're they're dropping out, but they're they are dying. And here's something else I think I need to do. Let's put down a couple of these to keep the Drigme a bit safer. Because you can see the edge of this stuff over here. But I want to put down a Drigme, I think, here, actually. If I'm not mistaken, they accept mossy cobblestone as, like, a little home spot. Uh, let me grab the book. So they can be given a home in the world, and they'll produce items from nearby monsters and animals as if they were slain without harming them. A wild Drigme may be befriended by throwing a wild and horn near it, which we know crystallizes it or it leaves a crystal. I, I don't know. To summon a Drigme, use a Drigme charm on a block of mossy cobblestone. Okay, got that. After a short time, the cobblestone will transform into a Drigme henge and summon your Drigme. To summon additional Drigmes, use more charms on the henge. Casting, dispel, or killing the Drigme will return your charm. A Drigme considers its home to be 10 blocks in every direction from its home. That should be fine. Uh, the Drigme will use this area to produce items from any entities nearby. Your Drigme's efficiency is dependent on its happiness. This may be increased for each entity nearby with a bonus for each unique type in its home, which yeah, that, that might be increased or decreased by the um, those different silverfish in there. Either way, um, I guess I don't need those damage plates because I was able to convince the uh, mother silverfish to scooch a little over. Um, but let's grab the Drigme charm. Click here and see what happens. If it dies because it's close to the mob masters, I'm really not going to be happy. <laughs> no, 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 no. Don't go that way. Don't go that way. You want to come over here? I should have propped you up a little bit. <laughs> you're you're very excited and cute. I, I will give you that. You, I don't know what it is you're doing. <gasps> no. Okay. Yeah, that was bad. That was bad. Let's 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 break this and lift it up okay bad idea i'm glad i get the charm back so let's put it here and see what happens we, we get the sparkles happening now and it makes a little henge oh okay i now see why it's called a henge <laughs> that's that's incredibly cute so you're doing the dance all that's great but i think i need to make sure you don't get too carried away once maximum progress has been reached, the henge will generate items and experience gems and deposit them into nearby inventories. Each time this occurs, the henge will require source to recharge. The number of drops and experience gems is equal to the Drigme happiness and experience value of the entities. To get started, place a chest and jar of source next to the henge. Oh, okay. I will need to do that. There's your... There's your chest in case you don't use the one that's down below. You've got one right next to you now, little guy. Um, but I need to get some other stuff going here. I need to get source generation up, which I think is the next part that's going to require a little bit of my attention to try and, try and figure out how to get that to work properly. So I decided to move our little Drigme friend. Uh, and I think in the process of moving him, he may end up making more stuff. But at the very least, before I moved him, he did make... Uh, some things drop into here it's just a matter of i think you only get one use and then you'd have to like break and replace them and or kill them or something like that but i i see the little henge and you know what i forgot i've got a personal shrinking device and i can shrink down pretty small 
I can't quite fit in here though, and I think my step assist is kind of getting in the way, but at least you can get a better view of what there is here. <laughs> anyway, let, let's sneak back up. But what I think we need here is source for this guy to actually uh, make the stuff that we need. And for that, it was suggesting in the book, or not in the book, in the quests, that we make a volcanic volcanic source link. I've never made or used one of these before, but reading up about it in the book, um, it more or less says that it'll turn certain things into lava nearby that it might be sitting on, so I am a little bit hesitant about putting it uh, on top of something like stone, uh, but we'll we'll see how things go. I am going to need some arcane pedestals for it to actually start working, uh, and I want it to be relatively close to this guy so that he can pull from it. As he accesses things in 10 blocks, I think what I'm going to do is just put some of these here, and then put the volcanic source link I guess the, usually stuff has to be within five blocks, so I'll put that there. Get rid of this torch here. Let's put down one more pedestal, and just because I, I want it to be a little bit more aesthetic, I, I don't know why. But <laughs> I think I've got, uh, I made a couple source jars, which they're just some archwood, uh, archwood slabs and glass, nothing really fancy there. If I put these down uh, on either side just for more symmetry, I think it's something 0% full. That's perfect. Um, I don't know if I need to put this on top of anything. We'll see. And I, I have some item pipes and hopper botany pots and stuff that I have plans for, plus a bunch of blazing archwood saplings. Because when I look this up in here, it talks about uh, blazing archwood being the best one for the most amount of source, and it also generates heat. But yeah, I figure we could try with that first and see how it goes. There we go. I have a 8x8 area that I'm going to be putting down hopper botany pots on top of. Ah, that's going to be a little bit of an annoyance to get everything to connect, but I think it'll work alright. There we go. I now have an 8x8 area of hopper botany pots. Now I just need to put dirt in all of them. I realize I could probably EMC a bunch of just blazing wood, but I find that to be a bit boring. And honestly, I wanted to be a little bit more interesting with this. Even if it is a bit spammy, I kind of like the idea of just having a huge field of trees constantly growing, feeding this little Drigny who is going to be, well, feeding us all sorts of goodies. So let's put down a little bit of pipe here for the uh, stuff to all come into. But I am going to want to have it go into, for at least temporarily, uh, a, a trash can, which I think I'm going to have underneath. No, I could have it here on the side and have things go there first and then extend it further out, I think. All right, so we're going to whitelist sticks, the saplings, and the leaves. That should pretty much take care of it. And then any kind of blazing archwood logs that come out of it can be fed elsewhere. Let's have it go underneath and connect to each of these in tandem. I should need the source jars nearby as well, and it's already looking like this is working as I intended. Oh, yep, yeah, look at that. It's turning stuff into magma blocks. Okay, that's kind of scary. Maybe I take some of these blocks out of the way underneath here. Let's put something a little bit less magma-like underneath there. Yeah, I think that'll work a little better. And with this in mind, I think I just need some source jars placed down. And that might work. It's making source. Yep, it sure is. And then that is feeding our little friend over here, who then is going to get excited and make us more uh, loot. Oh, actually, yeah, it worked. We're, we're getting more silverfish shards as well. So that seems to be working pretty good. I mean, it's it's not overly fast, but uh, I think that we're actually using, we're, are we making? Yeah, we're making the source faster than we're actually using it. So having extra source jars, I don't know that that's actually going to make a difference in this case. But I'm pretty happy about that because uh, I was considering having more Drigneys over here so that I can have them process this a little bit faster. I don't think he's very happy because there isn't a, exactly a selection of mobs to do this with, 
But once I get more of these silverfish hearts, I can then potentially make more Drigmies to make more silverfish hearts, etc. So at the moment, I do have an excess of source being produced, which I'm quite happy with. But once we do get more of those Drigmies, perhaps it will start evening out? I don't know. There's some other things that I wanted to deal with back at base. Specifically, you remember I have this little slime chunk issue somewhere back here. Uh, well, I need to get that fixed. Darn chicken running around the base. So I figure maybe I can use a Narslimus. I don't know the range on it, but I figure we could give it a go. Also, I did a little fix over here. Now that my mobs have started respawning again, which, yeah, you'll start seeing them up there with me being close enough. Pow. Uh, they now fall down here, and if they fall on the backside, they just get blown forward by the mob fan, and they get mob mashed. Uh, I still have my old advanced item collector, which may still collect the occasional item, but I have this item over here now collecting all sorts of XP, which I think I've got, what is it, eight, 17 buckets worth right now? And I've got this voiding everything else, uh, which can be dangerous, especially if I start throwing things out. But I did try to make that a little bit more uh, easy to figure out. The corner of it is right here. I just set the offset on this a little bit so that it would only be in that back corner and this middle area. So if I throw something back there or in here, then it'll get deleted. But that's really, really unlikely. So I don't think that I need to worry about that too much. So I have a rune of summer. I believe I've got a rune, is it water that I need for this next one? Yep, water, summer, a couple of lime petals, uh, petals and a couple of green petals plus a black one. Should make me a Narslimus. Now, I can't say I've ever used one of these before. I've seen one used once or twice. But that was the very distant past, like back in, what is it, 112 Minecraft or something? and see just what kind of range this thing's gonna have. I think I've got a little bit of dirt in here. I don't mind using a little dirt. Uh, let's break this piece of stone here. Put that down. What kind of range? That is not good range. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't make it an itty bitty one. So for now, I'm just gonna set it here. Whether it's useful or not, I don't really know. I can have this aim here, and I can have that connect to it, and if any slimes happen to come by, they should get eaten up by this thing, but yeah, it's a really small area. Gosh, you'd need to make a whole bunch of Narslimas in order for this to work, or have them all being pushed in one direction. I suppose that's an option as well, but I'm not too bothered by it. It's just in case there's the occasional slime down there. What are you doing down there? There we go. Let me get you out of there, silly chicken. There you go. You're free. Coming back, I do see that some progress has been made. We've got a couple silverfish hearts, a couple dark matter. And I think what's going to happen next is that I'm probably going to have a short episode today. And we're going to call it here with this nice little creation, invention, weird setup that I have going on that is currently harvesting the, uh, the mother silverfish. And thankfully, the little babies are being destroyed because, yeah, I don't want my world to get overridden with uh, entities either way. Oh, I can even see the little magical beams being used on this thing. Nice. So there you go, another episode, at least something a little different. I'm not entirely sure how much further we're going to go with this series. Uh, I do know that there are some things that we could probably make a lot more of uh, that I already have the resources for. So we'll get into that next time and see what more progress we can make. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give a like, comment, subscribe. Don't be afraid to stop by on Twitch. We stream there regularly, and the VODs are uploaded to our other Mischief of Mice 2 YouTube channel, which is probably on the screen now. Click so that you can sub and get notified. Till next time, folks. I'll see ya.